Okay, now that everyone's asleep, we got the puppy asleep. We've got homeboy asleep in there. Uh, I'm gonna use this time to do a Q&A. I get all kinds of questions from people in the comments and on Instagram. Some people DM me a lot. I'm gonna go through some of the top questions that people ask me about foster care and my personal experience and the general experience of it all. Let's get started right now. Okay, so people contact me in the comments below. They reach out to me on Instagram in comments or direct message on Instagram a lot. And a lot of people say some really sweet things, but other people also have some questions about the foster care experience in general and some things specifically about me and my uh, journey through foster to adult. Um, so that's what I wanna tackle. Uh, let's just get right into this. The first question I get a lot is why do I give a different uh, letter to each child that um, I talk about on social media or I bring into my home? Um, one thing that's very important to know about foster care is we have to conceal the identity of the children that we bring into our homes when it comes to social media, when it comes to going out into the world. We're not even supposed to say that a child is in foster care when we go out and meet someone. I am completely on board with this. I, I think that we don't need to be disclosing kids' uh, life experiences. I don't think we need to be talking about their cases and things like that with anyone in person or online. So the reason that I personally do this is because um, I don't wanna disclose their names uh, to the public. So I basically give them a letter and that's why we have baby S, baby L, baby R. Uh, because it's just a way to give them a letter, let you guys know this is how we're gonna address them. Someone's waking up, give me a second, I gotta go get him, probably because he hears me talking. One second, one second. How was that nap? Was it good? Was it good? Yeah, <laughs> so he was, he's was. he been napping for some time. Okay, so let's see how we can, how long we can do this. So basically, I can seal all their identity. That's also why I put, uh, I block out their face. We cannot show you guys who these children are. It's to protect them. I'm fully on board with it. Um, you don't need to know their name. You don't need to know what their faces look like. Trust me, they're gorgeous. They're gorgeous babies. And I wish I could share it with you all, but um, it's just not something that we're allowed to do. That is why I give them a letter for their name. That's why I block out their faces. Let's do the next question. So this is a really good question. Someone recently just said to me, how do I have enough strength to uh, take in another placement after the first placement went to a new foster home? This is a really good question. This is something that I thought long and hard about when I started fostering. Um, this is something that people bring up to me a lot. I'm so sorry that I'm moving around a lot because he requires it and he's starting to fall back asleep. So this is good. Um, people always also ask me, and it's oftentimes one of the things that a lot of people use as their, I don't wanna say excuse, their reason for not wanting to get into being a foster parent, having to part ways with a child. As you know, reunification is the number one first step for any child entering the foster care system. Uh, basically, if you don't know what reunification is, reunification is where a child's taken from the home, they're in the custody of DCFS, Department of Children and Family Services, and they're placed with a foster parent. The foster, the biological parents uh, have an opportunity to get things in order with their life, and, um, and at that time they would, re once it is cleared by the courts, they would reunify the child with their, their biological parents. So. Why was I able to take in more placements? Well, one, I wanna be a parent, I wanna be a father. Uh, this is the road that I have chosen to go down. So I think that in itself gives me enough strength, a lot of strength to continue down this path. I took a break. I thought I was gonna go toward IVF after that first placement. If you guys watched 
the video with, um, which will be up in there, I'll put the card. If you watch the video where I had to let go of baby S, you saw me in tears, you know that it was extremely difficult for me. Uh, after that time, I took a break and went to Paris. I went to Turkey, I went to San Francisco, I went to Mexico, I went a lot of places in a very short amount of time over the summer. But as much as I thought that I was done with foster care, it gave me this break, this time to like explore the world. I was in a relationship. I just took a pause and I really think there's a there's someone named Bob and I've been speaking to him since I got my license. So it's been over a year that I've been doing this process and I've never met Bob. I've only talked to him on the phone. He's from a different agency that I'm not even with. He has been so kind to me and inspirational to me. Um, and he said to me, Kevin, you might have to take a break. Sometimes people take a break. The break that I took, unintentionally it was a break. It was, I thought it was done fully. It was one of the best things I could have done because when it was time to come back, I got this, this what I believe to be God talking to me and I, I, was, I was asked to take in a placement and I was taken aback and I just said, yes, I'll do it. And that led me to baby R which that placement was a placement before him that never showed up. Um, but the break was needed because it gave me time to mourn baby S. It gave me time to be frustrated with the system, time to be frustrated with it all. And then also time to focus on me and think about what I want. That then got me back to foster care. In that break, in the losing baby S and baby L, it helped me to get more comfortable with the process, to understand the process, and just accept the process for what it is. I always say, not everyone is gonna be able to do this. I think everyone should look into foster care, go to classes, get certified, take in a placement, take in another placement. And at any point during that process, if you feel like it's too much, just stop. But at least you checked into it and tried it. I don't feel like I'm at a place where I need to stop or want to stop. So that's the best I can offer. Like my heart is in it. My, I want to be a parent and this is the road I'm going, but you, you have to give yourself time. It's everyone says it, everyone, they, people told me, people say it. They, they've always said, you've got to give yourself a break. You've got to give yourself time. Hurry up and wait is what they say. Hurry up and wait. All right. So why do I always get placements that are boys? Um, great question. I don't know. This is what shows up to my door. Uh, boys have shown up, two boys uh, that were Caucasian, one boy that was Latino. Um, I don't know. My agency knows that I'm open to taking in any race, any gender, um, as long as they are newborn to the age of one. Don't have an answer other than that. I, other than like, maybe this is what God wants for me right now. This is what the universe is bringing me and I accept it. I will say I do like that physical contrast. I like being out in the world and showing the world that um, families look different. Families are not one size fits all. They come in different shapes, colors, varieties. Um, I actually have a shirt. I'm starting to like create some like uh, inspirational merchandise and I've I developed the or designed this shirt that says um, father and then it has like the greater sign um, is greater than race and it's just this like imagery that being a father is greater than the color of our, of our skin so yeah that's that's I, I don't know it's just what's coming right away but just so you know at least in the county of Los Angeles you can tell your county worker or you can tell your agency worker uh, if you want to be paired with any specific gender, race, age, and you can dwindle it down to whatever you want, whatever you're comfortable with, or you can leave it wide open. That leads us into this next question. This is a very, very, very popular question. Why do some people go uh, get licensed directly through the county and why do some people get licensed uh, through a licensed agency? So yeah, you can go through 
uh, a licensed agency or directly through the county. I have friends who went through an agency. I talk about my friend Michelle a lot in these videos. Uh, she was, I was introduced to her through my agency. Um, and then I have friends who are foster parents who went directly through the county. It doesn't really matter. The best thing that I can say is when you go through an agency, uh, you're less of a number and more of a person. And you have a, an advocate there for you. However, you will have more paperwork, more visitations in your home uh, with an agency than you will a county social worker. So every single week I have a visit with my uh, worker at my agency on top of my visits with the biological parents. Um, and once a month, I have a visit with the county social worker. And that's on top of all the doctor's visits, therapy visits, it is a lot. But what I love is there is a literal advocate at the agency. If anyone asks me ever which route to go, go with an agency because you have another touch point. You have another person to come to with questions. They can give you answers, give you resources, give you help. They can direct you through this. The county social workers are amazing. This little man social worker, love her. She cares about him. She supports him. Um, and she cares about me and my emotions and she cares about the biological parents and their emotions and their place in this whole thing. She's wonderful. The workers are great. They're extremely busy. They have a really, really big caseload and they're not always readily accessible because they're driving around the city, they're meeting with families, they have very busy jobs. So if you can go with an agency, you have another touch point, another person that you can be uh, working with and utilizing. This question is a pretty interesting question. Um, someone said, someone sent me a message on Instagram and they said, that DCFS is pressuring them to take in older kids because there are far more older kids in the system. Look, I don't know exactly what county this person lives in, where they live, but it is my full understanding that you can tell the county workers, you could tell your agency what age, child, race, sex, child you wanna bring into your home. Anyone can pressure you to do anything in life. Anyone can say, we want you to do this, uh, or want you to go this route, do this, whatever. It's up to you to decide what you want to do. Um, set your boundaries. Set your boundaries. I think there is power in setting your boundaries. Um, know what you want, be sure about it, and let them know. Here's the most important thing. If I am someone who says like, oh, I really want a newborn to age one, but anyone in this process is pressuring me to take a five, six, seven, eight year old, I would question that because if I'm not there emotionally, sometimes financially, sometimes whatever, ready to take in a child that age, I'm gonna not be able to provide what that child sometimes may physically need, emotionally need. Wouldn't we want people to take in children that they are ready to parent because you are parenting these children while you are in there, while they are in your home. So maybe let the worker know that like, look, I'm not, very, I'm not ready to parent a child of that age. One reason I don't take in a baby older than one, you know, sometimes like I think like, should I take a three or four year old? And I think they're awesome. They're probably awesome to have running around your home. But first off, kids in the system that long come with more trauma, right? People know that it's, there's studies around that. If I haven't parented a child from newborn to age three, how am I gonna take on a child that's three or four years old that already comes with just like, they're an individual, they're a human, they have their own thoughts and expressions and ways about going through life, plus the, the traumas they may have experienced that are the reason they're even in foster care. For me, it feels like too much to do as a single person, never having had raised kids at least to that age. So for me, like I've worked with, with infants before. I know infants, I'm used to them. I, that's why I personally wanna take in kids that young. And I also want that bonding experience with infants and what it takes uh, the, the um, I wanna bond with infants and provide the nurturing that infants need. 
Uh, that's those are the reasons for me but if if you're being pressured i would say just be sure about your boundaries and trust that setting that boundary is going to actually be the thing that's going to move things energetically in the motion that in the way that you want this was an interesting question uh someone asked me would i co-parent with a woman um, and have a child a biological child of my own absolutely not i don't have an interest of parenting a child with someone else. Um, it's one thing to be in a relationship, uh, but I don't want to go through parenting with, a, with, with someone else at this point in my life. So let's say I meet someone and I've got a child. If they wanna be in my life, that's great. They will be dating someone who has a child. I'm not looking for someone to take on parenthood with me. If I'm uh, in a relationship and I get married in the future, which I hope I do, um, at that point, I would hope that that person wants to adopt the child that I've then adopted at whatever what point I've adopted. Um, but I don't want to parent with someone. Another thing is, I am gay. I have no interest in being in any sort of relationship that close with a woman. There's, there's nothing ill about it. There's nothing... Uh, wrong about it um it's just not for me i don't have that desire and probably the biggest thing which is interesting as to why i went through the like thought i wanted to do the ivf but going through that mo that point of like i should do ivf actually made me even more sure that i don't want a biological child i have no desire to have a biological child even during the the point this year where I thought I was going to have a biological child, there was something in me that was like, I don't want this. Like, I don't need it at all. I am way more excited, way more interested in adopting a child than having my own. I have no, if you want to go have a biological child, do you, do what is best for you. For me, I have no care. I've got three brothers, they all have children. My name will go on, our genes will go on. I don't have a desire for it. So yeah, no, not interested. Okay, so being LGBTQ and fostering, again, I don't know if this is a location thing or not, but I live in Southern California, right? Like Los Angeles, they don't care. Um, I think it's actually kind of in, uh, embraced. I know one time I was walking down the streets of Hollywood and I saw a sign for LGBTQ people to start fostering and adopting. Um, they're not, at least where I live, they're not denying people for that. Um, and I think pretty much almost everywhere, you're not being denied for, for that. I think that what is important to remember through this process is that there's gonna be ups and downs. This is a roller coaster, there's gonna be ups and downs. And we have to remember that if we're gonna parent children, whether you're gonna adopt them or not, they're gonna get to a point in life where they're gonna do something stupid. They're gonna do something that kids do, get in trouble or whatever it may be, and you have to step up and be the parent and absorb all of their anxieties in those moments, their fears in those moments. Um, and it's it, you're gonna literally have to absorb that for your children. And that is some, where I think that applies in this, that I know it's scary to enter this process and think, oh my goodness, because I'm gay, I'm not gonna get placed with a child. I know that that's scary, but I'm telling you right now that that's most likely not gonna be the case. Um, and even if that is happening, um, it might be something you just have to like, you have to fight through. First, internally, you have to know, I'm not gonna let that stop me from doing this. And then also, you need to um, know that that struggle that you're going through is the tip of the iceberg in the struggles that you're gonna experience through this process. And then if it is happening, you need to talk to someone at the county level, somewhere that you're at and say, this is what I'm experiencing. How do we rectify this? Don't just not do this because of that. Because if you are LGBTQ, you already know that you're already facing a lot of discrimination in this world that we live in. You gotta power through this because parenting is tough. Parenting is tough, it's a lot of work, and that is the least of this roller coaster you're about to embark on. And then the last question, probably my favorite question, is fostering to adopt wrong? No, no it is not wrong. 
I am so sick and tired of people coming down on people for wanting to adopt through the foster care system. Um, I'm tired of people shaming foster parents. I'm tired of it. Listen, if someone's fostering in the first place, like applaud them because not enough people are doing it. So if you are that selfless to foster in the first place, applaud that person. I don't understand why communities of people, this happens in all sorts of communities of people, shame their own communities. It makes no sense to me. People want to adopt through the foster care system. Get over it. If it has nothing to do with you, stop worrying about it. However, major caveat, do not get into this thinking that you're gonna go right to adoption. You have to know that reunification in foster care is the very first step and you have to get on board with it. You might not like it, but you have to get on board with it and you have to support it. You have to support it for the children. You have to support it for the process in itself, right? But that doesn't mean you're not allowed to want to adopt because if a biological parents do not get things in motion to benefit themselves and the child, then the child needs to be adopted. They're going to get adopted and there's nothing wrong. If no one wanted to adopt, you'd have 400,000 kids plus sitting in the foster care system. We need people who want to adopt. We need those people. Not everyone wants to adopt. Some people want to be foster parents only. And if they want to be foster parents only, that's their prerogative. There's nothing wrong with that. Because guess what? We need those people too. We absolutely need those people. My biggest thing with this is stop shaming other people. You don't know why people are in this. You don't know why people are doing it. But what you do need to do and you do need to know is it's our job to support our community at large, always. That's the end of this video. I hope you guys like it. I hope it answers some questions. If there's anything that I didn't answer, please hit me up in the comments below. I'll do another video at some point. I don't wanna do these too much because I don't know how many questions people actually really have. But yeah, send the questions in the comments below. I respond to every single comment in the comments. If you write something that I don't like, makes me feel negative or whatever, I block you and I delete the comment because I have no room for negativity in my life. All right, guys, I love you all so much. Thanks for watching. Got another vlog coming soon. Peace out.